Yes. Is that okay? So, I am going to go back to um, Now, we're going to take all of these adjustments we've done, and we're going to now take all of these adjusting journal entries to create what we call a new adjusted trial balance. So after adjusting entries have been recorded and then posted to their accounts, we're going to have something called a new adjusted trial balance that's going to show a list of all the accounts along with all the debits and all the credits. And from there, we're going to prepare our financial statements. We're going to look at this trial balance, and we're going to take those accounts that are specifically used for the income statement and put on the income statement. And then we're going to take those accounts that are specifically used for assets, liabilities, and equity and put it on that. So let's look at what we're going to do here. <laughs> this shows you on Blue Design Studio the adjusted trial balance. Do you see our adjusted trial balance has all of our accounts and it shows our debits and our credits. We need to then find these accounts that are only utilized for the income statement and pull them out. So we know Rev design revenue is in, it in uh, a revenue account. We know all of our expenses here, wages, utilities, rent, office supplies, and depreciation is part of our various expenses. We're going to pull these accounts to create a financial statement called the income statement. Do you see here it shows our revenues, it shows our expenses, and what's the bottom number, guys? Net income. Do you see we take that net income, and when we create our statement of owner's equity, how we have to use it? Okay? So, we know what we need for our income statement. We also know what we need for our statement of owner's equity. We start with J Blue Capital of 40000 then we add our income, and then we'll subtract our withdrawals. So we need to start with the income statement first. After we do the income statement first, we need to take either the net income or the net loss and flow it to our statement of owner's equity. And then we come up with a new balance at the end of the period for our statement of owner's equity. This J Blue Capital is going to be used to create our balance sheet. So when you look at our balance sheet, whoops, when you look at our balance sheet, our balance sheet takes all the other accounts, the assets, the liabilities, and from our owner's equity section, we take the ending balance. So you see here, we've got our various assets. We have our cash, our accounts receivable, our office supplies, prepaid rent. Do you see how our office equipment is then minus our accumulated depreciation to come up with our new balance? All of our assets total 48760 we then take our liabilities. They total 7,600. We take our owner's equity from the previous um, owner's equity statement we created to have 41,160. We know that assets have to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. If we total our liabilities of 7,600, and our owner's 
capital or owner's equity of 41,160. See how we get our assets? Our 48,760. Does that make sense? So, you know you have to start with the income statement. From that, our net income or our net loss flows over to our statement of owner's capital. Then our balance, our ending balance on our statement of owner's capital flows over to our balance sheet. You see how they all sync together ultimately? But we have to start out with our income statement first, don't we? So, um, I think that is <coughs> where we're going to go right now. I want to go and let's look at how all this makes sense. So we're going to do preparation of an income statement and statement of owner's equity from an adjusted trial balance. So it tells us Shaw Company's adjusted trial balance on December 31st, 2014 contains the following accounts and balances. A Shaw Capital 8600 what kind of balance would that be? It's an equity account, a Shaw Capital. Owner's equity has a normal what kind of balance? Credit balance. A Shaw withdrawals, 350. That has a normal debit balance. Service revenues, 2600 has a normal credit balance. Rent expense, all of our expenses have what kind of balance? Debits. Debits. So our rent expense, our wages expense, and our utilities and telephone expenses have all debit balances. So we need to look at these various accounts. Which of these accounts are used for an income statement? That's it. Not anything with capital or withdrawals, are there? So we pretty much have our service revenue of 2600 and all of our various expenses. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go and create an income statement. So to create an income statement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by showing I'm going to start here by showing Shaw Company, then I'm going to say Income Statement, then I'm going to say For the Month Ended December 31st, 2014, right? Now we're going to start with revenues, and we only have one revenue, service revenues, right? So our service revenues are $2,600, right? Then, we're going to come up with our expenses. Our first expense, rent expense, or however you want to record them, is 400 Then we've got our wages expense of how much? 900 Our utilities expense, Telephone expense. And all of our total expenses basically fifteen fifty. 
1550. 1550. So the net difference then we have what we call net income. The net income is going to be our revenues minus our expenses would be 1050 See how we came up with, based on the information they gave us, what accounts we needed to draw out to provide our income statement. Okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a statement of owner's equity. What is it we begin with when we create a statement of owner's equity? Investment. The statement of owner's equity begins with if there's a beginning balance or if there's not a beginning balance, zero and then investments. So we're going to start with A. Shaw capital as of November 30th, 2014. And how much is that? 8600 8, What are we going to add to that, guys? Net income. Where are we going to get our net income from? Income the income statement. Right? Then we have an, uh, a subtotal. $96.50. Then, what are we going to subtract from the total? Withdrawals? Withdrawals. And the withdrawals are $350? So what is our A. Shaw capital as of December 31st, 2014? 9300 Does that make sense, guys, how we can create those financial statements just based on our adjusted trial balance? Make sense? Yep. Okay. So, I think what we're going to do is go back here. And you've got all the solutions in here to go through the various problems. I want to take, I think E9 is what we're going to do. Uh, let's do, let's do E9 then E10. E9. <coughs> you guys are going to help me now. Prepare year-end adjusting entries for each of the following. Number one. Who wants to read it? Who wants to help me do this one? Right. Perfect. One. Office supplies has a balance of $168 on January 1st. Purchases debited to office supplies during the year amount to $830. A year-end inventory reveals supplies of $570 on hand. So, we know office supplies Started with how much? 168. Office supplies. Sorry, let me clean this up. So we've got office supplies. It started with a balance of 
168. How much was added? What? 830 during the year. 830 was added during the year. So we we now have a new balance of 168 plus 830 or a new balance of 998. But how much should be in this account? 570 really should be the balance. So what do we need to do to adjust this? Nine ninety eight minus the five seventy, and how much did you say that was? Two twenty eight. Four twenty eight. Good. So we need to adjust this a credit of four twenty eight. What will our um, journal entry be? Debit office supplies expense for how much? For four twenty-eight. And what are we going to credit? Office supplies for four twenty-eight. Does that make sense? See how that will adjust it then? How do you how do you log it? Okay. Okay, so let me open this up for you, so I'll show you. Uh, this is what number? Nine. Nine? Okay. Let me go up here and show you. Yeah, I was just starting to wonder the same thing. How do you put it? Perfect. They kind of give you too many lines. And don't get too worried about not making it perfect. Okay, so basically here's an example. You see how you've got your office supplies expense is going to be your debit. Your credit is office supplies. And they just provide you with some room in order to determine. You see how they do it? Your beginning balance plus your purchases equals your total available. But your ending balance needs to be 570, so that's how many you, know you consumed. Do you want me to make that bigger, guys? Can you see it okay? So like is this, are these solutions for these ones on the website? They're on this. So are the problem ones on the regular? It's Everything. On, it's uh, online. This, this solution is on. on okay, the what I did. Because for chapter 2, I went through that, the solutions are going to come back. And I'm sorry. I went all the way to, like, the yeah, I gave her help for that. This has everything. So, so that was just last week. Yeah. This, do you see where it says Chapter 2 Solutions? Mm -hmm. It's got everything. I'll get rid of this Classroom Solutions because that, okay? And then if you go to Week 2, they got to those and they, I'm sorry, but they do now. See that chapter two solution has everything. Okay. And week one also. I'm going to just start putting them all on for you. Okay. okay. Because that way you know what you're dealing with. So do you see how we did that one, guys? Does that make sense? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Next. We've got depreciation of office equipment is estimated to be 4260 for the year. What is it we need to debit and credit for office equipment? Go back and look at what we've done previously. De debit depreciation expense of depreciation expense office equipment 4260 and we credit 
accumulated depreciation office equipment for 4260 And we show a memo there to record depreciation on office equipment allocated for the year. Okay? Next. The next one says, Property taxes for six months estimated at $1,750 have accrued but have not been recorded. So <coughs> what are we going to do? You know, property taxes happen if you are thinking about paying them or not. If you're living in your house or not, you still owe the taxes just due to the passage of time. So as you see here, we're debiting property taxes expense for $1,750 and we're crediting property taxes payable for $1,750. Do you see how this is very similar to a salary or wages accrual, right, or interest accrual? The next says, unrecorded interest income on U.S. government bonds is 1,700. So it's not been recorded, which means we've earned it, we just haven't reported it yet. So we need to show interest receivable, 1,700, a credit to interest income for 1,700. Just through the passage of holding those bonds, we've earned the money. We haven't gotten the cash yet, but we need to record the income and show it as a receivable to record interest accrued during the period. Just like we would do interest expense or interest we owe, even though we haven't paid it, the same is true here. Next. Unearned revenue has a balance of $1,800. Services for $600 received in advance have now been performed. So we had a liability of $1,800. Services for $600 now have been performed. What are we going to do here, guys? We're going to debit unearned revenue for 600 and we're going to now credit our service revenue for $600. Then services totaling $400 have been performed. The customer has not yet been billed. Hmm. What do you guys think? Let's just kind of process. What do you think the accounts are going to be? Services. Service revenue is going to be a credit. What's going to be the debit? Payable. Something. 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 A receivable. We don't owe it. We're going to receive it. So we'll show accounts receivable, $400 a debit, and service revenue, $400 is a credit to record service revenue earned, but we haven't billed it yet. Okay? How are you guys doing so far? Good, bad, bless you. So we're going to start with problem one. Anyone need a break? Everyone need a break?